Good evening, brothers and sisters. Or as our West Indian family often says, good night. This is the day that the Lord has made and we rejoice and we are glad in it. We have come through the most difficult year. It has been so tough, so difficult. So many who've been sick, so many who've been infected with COVID-19 and over 300,000 who have transitioned to the other side. And yet by the grace and mercy of God, we are still here on the precipice of a new year, 2021. Before we begin our worship tonight, I'm asking you, number one, hit that thumbs up button and like our video today. Hit that button right now. Don't forget about it. I want you to hit that button right now. If you have not subscribed to the Calvary YouTube channel, please do that right now. And thirdly, if you will, share this video with as many people as you can. I want you to know in spite of all that's going on around us, our God is still on the throne and our God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Our prayer is that you will be blessed for sharing this late night service with us today. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God, it is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. We don't want you to just be a spectator or a surfer on the web. We want you to come on in and worship with us today. Clap your hands with us today. Sing along the songs of Zion with us today. Read the word with us, pray with us. Say amen when the preacher preaches. Wherever you are, in your bedroom, your living room, your dining room, wherever you are, come on and let's give God the glory for God has been so good to us. Hallelujah. God is worthy to be praised right where you are in your homes. Why don't you just lift up your hands and open up your mouth and give God a praise. Yes, God. Come Hallelujah. on, he's brought you through 2020. He's Hallelujah. brought you throughout this whole year. Yes, it's been a rough year. He's brought yes. you through a pandemic. And yes. for that, Lord, yes. we give you the praise. For that, we give you the glory. Thanks be unto God who gives us the victory and causes us to triumph. We just want to declare to you today that you are victorious. You have the victory yes. and you are going to walk into 2021 yes. victorious. Do you believe that? Yes. You are walking in victory. Yes. No matter what's going on, no matter what, how you may feel, you yes. will walk into 2021 victorious. Yes. By the hand of the Almighty, we have been set free. Yes healed, delivered, and now we're walking in the victory. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Hallelujah. For giving us the victory. Yes, Lord. Sing with us. It says, By the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, delivered, made complete. Now I'm walking in victory. Yes, by the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, delivered, made complete. Now I'm walking in victory. Can you help me sing that? Say, by the hand, by, by the hand of the Almighty, I've been set I've free, been set healed, 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 delivered, delivered made complete. And now we're walking now in I'm victory. Walking in victory. Come on, raise that up right where you are. Say, by the hand, by the hands of the Almighty. I've been set free, healed, healed delivered, made complete. Now we're now walking I'm in victory. Walking in victory. Come on at home, just declare this. Say, 
Said I'm walking in victory. 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 Got my joy back. Got my joy back. Yeah. Said I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. I said I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. Said I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. Got my peace back. Got my peace back. See by the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, healed delivered, delivered we've made complete. Now I'm walking yeah. in victory. Come on, put it in harmony. See by the hand of the, Almighty, of the Almighty, I've been, I've set, been free. set free, healed, healed delivered, oh. made complete. Now I'm walking, now I'm walking in, in victory. Yeah. Say. I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. I said I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. Said I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. Got my joy back. Got my joy back. I said I'm walking in victory. Walking Come on, declare that. Walking in victory. Walking in victory. Yeah. Walking in victory. Walking in victory. Walking in victory. Got my peace back. Got my I said, peace by the back. Hand. By, by the hands of the Almighty, I've been set free. Yeah. Yeah. I've been healed. You've complete. been delivered. You've now been I'm set free. In victory. Come on, claim your victory today. See by the hand by the of the Almighty. Yeah. I've been set free. Yeah. Healed. I've been healed. Complete. Set free. Now I'm walking in victory. Oh, I said I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. Said I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. Said I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. Got my joy back. Got my Yes, and I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. And I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. And I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. Got my peace back. Got my peace back. Yeah. And I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. And I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. And I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. Got my hope back. Walking in victory. Walking in victory. I said I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. in victory. Walking in victory. Walking in victory. Got my strength back. Say by the hand, take it up. By the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free. Yeah. I've been healed. You've been delivered. You've been set free. And it's all because of Jesus. He walked with you. And he talked with you. And he covered you. Protected you, yeah. Now I'm walking yeah. in victory. Yeah, said I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. Got my joy back. Got my joy back. Oh, I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. Yes, I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. Devil, you can't hold me. Walking in victory. Got my peace back. I'm walking in victory. Walking in Come on, victory. I need to just march where you are. Walking Come in on, victory. come on, march in victory. Walking in so victory. Got my whole back. Said I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. Got my strength back. Got my strength she back. Got my joy back. Got my joy back. You're gonna back. get your peace back. Got my you're going to get your hope back. Hope You're going to get your strength back. Strength Say, back. I've got my joy. Got my joy back. I've got my peace. Got my peace back. I've got my hope. Got my hope back. I've got my strength. Got my strength Say, back. I've got my joy. Got my joy back. I've got my Remind yourself complete. of all the ways that now he's made this. walking in victory. And lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus, for the way that the you made it. For I've the victory that you've given He'll me. Deliver, Nobody but complete. you, Jesus. Now I'm Nobody but in you, victory. Jesus. Come on, one last time. Say, by the hand of the Almighty. By the hands of the Almighty, yeah. I've been set yeah. free. 
healed, delivered, made complete. Now I'm walking in victory. You're walking in victory. Yes, we are. Come on, name it and claim it to say, yes. I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. I need everybody to type in the comments right now. I'm walking in victory. I'm walking. In. Go ahead, type in the comments right now. I want us to be in agreement. We will not enter 2021 the same way we enter 2020. We're walking into a new year. So that means we got to let some things go. Hallelujah. We need to walk in victory. Walk in victory. Hallelujah. We need to walk into 2021 knowing that God is going to do the things that we ask Him to do for us. Hallelujah. We're moving forward. We're moving forward in what God has for us. We're moving forward into the newness of things. We're moving forward. We're moving forward. Hallelujah. I know it's just another day. It's another day, another year. But guess what? It's a chance to start over. It's a chance to make things fresh. It's a chance to try again. Hallelujah. As we look back at what God has done for us the whole 2020, we know that he's only going to take us higher in 2021. Hallelujah. How many of us want to move forward and higher? Hallelujah. Forward and higher. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. What a moment you brought me to such a freedom have found in you. You're the healer, you're the healer, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going back, I'm moving ahead, here to declare to you. Past is over, you are things made new. Surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. Yeah. Hey, all oh, you have risen with all power in your hands, you have given me. A second chance, hallelujah, hallelujah, yeah, 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 yeah. Not going back, I'm moving ahead. Here to declare to you, past is over. You are all things are made. I'm moving, moving forward. Oh, I'm moving forward. Oh, take me to the chorus one more time. Can you sing that with me? Say, not going, not going back. Moving on.
you have for me. when it gets ugly sometimes we're like oh lord but just know that no matter how ugly he get it gets you are hallelujah following him he is covering you hallelujah so you'll be all right you're safe in his arms you're safe no matter what it feels like no matter what it felt like you are always safe in his arms he did it before and he will continue to do it again you are safe in his arms if that's your declaration today that you want to follow him, just type in the comments, moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. Follow you forward. Amen, amen, amen. We give God all of the praise and all of the glory for he is the one who makes all things new. Bring y'all the tithe into the storehouse that there might be meat in God's house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, and see if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing there shall not be room enough to receive. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for continuing to provide me everything I need to give you my tithes and offerings, to pay every bill I have, to pay every person I owe, and to be generous and help those in need. In the name of him who is rich unto every blessing, even Christ Jesus, my Lord, I pray, amen. Again, Calvary family, and to those of you in our virtual congregation, 
members of Calvary as well as friends and loved ones who share this uh, time of worship with us today. We thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your continued support. And I'm asking you to please, as you have in the past, please continue to be faithful and diligent in your tithes and offerings. For those of you who are not members of Calvary and yet your hearts have been touched to send us uh, tangible expressions of love and support, we thank you all the more. Uh, if you would like envelopes and you don't have them, you have but to uh, request them, you can call 718-297-2301 or you can email us, info at cbcjny.org and just request envelopes, leave us, uh, of course, your name and forwarding address. We will be glad to send those to you. Uh, others of you may like to take advantage of one of the uh, electronic venues, a cash app or Givelify, uh, Venmo or Easy Tithe, which is text to give, whatever is most convenient. Uh, we pray that you will avail yourself of that opportunity. And those of you who are a part of the Easy Tithe uh, uh, program, you have that app downloaded. We want you to know there's a special app for Calvary Baptist Church and you can download that on your, um, on your phone or tablet or whatever, and uh, it will make your giving experience much easier, uh, quicker, uh, and as well, it will give you other important uh, updates and announcements, and uh, you have access to all of the services uh, from the past. Well, this has been a difficult year. Um, at least in my lifetime, one of the most difficult years in recent memory. And yet tonight, we are still here, just a few minutes away from midnight, just a few minutes away from January the 1st, 2021. And so I want to share with you from a passage of scripture in the Old Testament. And it was about the celebration of the Israelites, the celebration of their New Year's, uh, as they called it, Rosh Hashanah. I want to share with you uh, and use that as a basis uh, for my message to you tonight. In the 23rd chapter of the book, of Leviticus. We shall read verses 23 through 25. Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, beginning at verses 23 through 25. The Lord said to Moses, say to the Israelites, on the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a day of rest, a sacred assembly commemorated with trumpet blasts. Do no regular work, but present an offering made to the Lord by fire. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, on the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a day of rest, a sacred assembly commemorated with trumpet blasts. Do not do no regular work, but present an offering made to the Lord by fire, commemorated with trumpet blasts. I want to talk today with this thought in mind, let the trumpets blow, let the trumpets blow. Here in our text, we have this brief command to celebrate the first day of the seventh month. It came to be called in Jewish religion and culture, the Feast of Trumpets, 
or if you will, Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah in the Hebrew literally means the head of the year or first of the year or if you will, New Year's. We call it New Year's. The Jews called it the head of the year, the first of the year, the first day of the new year. Rosh Hashanah was celebrated during the seventh month, the seventh month of Tishrei, because it was tied in to the agricultural cycle of sowing and reaping and harvesting. And so the Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, was celebrated at the end of one cycle and the beginning of a new cycle of sowing and reaping and harvesting. This day was considered the first day of the new season, the first day of the new year. You've got to remember that there were no TVs or radios or internets or social media. There weren't all of these electronic means to get the word out. And so they announced Rosh Hashanah. They announced the new year by blowing the trumpet. Specifically, it was a trumpet made out of a ram's horn. And so on Rosh Hashanah, on the head of the year, the first of the year, they would blow the trumpets throughout all of the land announcing that a new year had arrived. God gave them specific instructions as to how the trumpet was to be played. To begin with, there would be a long blast, afterwards followed by three short blasts. Afterwards, there would be nine staccato blasts. And then finally, there would be a final, very, very, very long blast. When the trumpets in Israel blew, then all of the nation became excited. All of the nation everywhere knew that they were going into a new year. Well, I want to tell you three things about this celebration this celebration of trumpets, this celebration of Rosh Hashanah. I want to tell you three things that the ancient Israelites did on Rosh Hashanah, which many Jewish communities carry on even unto this day. And perhaps in looking at what they did, we will have a clue as to what you and I need to do going into this new year, 2021. First of all, Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year, the first of the year, new year for the Israelites, was a time of, re a time of remembrance. And whatever you do this New Year's Day, I want you to take a few moments and just remember not just to remember the immediate happenings of the last year, how could we ever forget that? But first of all, what the Jews remembered more than anything was that they remembered who their creator is. They remembered God. You see, every new year was a commemoration of the new year before, was a commemoration of a new year before, was a commemoration of the new year before, was a commemoration of the new year before, until the new year stretched all the way back to the early mornings of creation when God stepped out on nothing, separated light from darkness, and said, let there be light. 
the Jews remembered that every new year they were to remember their creator. They were to remember God who had created them, God who had started it all. Yes, the new year was a celebration to remember who God is and to remember what God had done for his children, the Israelites. All on this new year, I hope you will begin this new year with reflections, not just of what went on in 2020. We'll get to that. But I hope that you will go back and commit commemorate the, the new year last year and the year before and the year before all the way back theoretically to the very beginning of time when God scooped down and he picked up the dust of the earth and molded it, shaped it and formed it and blew into its nostrils the breath of life and we became living creatures. Oh brothers and sisters, New Year's is a year, it's a time to remember who God is. New Year's is a time to celebrate God. Oh, I know there will be many secular celebrations, uh, these raucous parties and, uh, yes, uh, 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 um, uh, parties that rival the Bacchae of Greek. Uh, literature, yes, yes, uh, all kinds of parties and inebriations and whatever, but for the people of God, what we remember, amen, is not a secular celebration. We remember who our God is, that in the early mornings of creation, God created us. We didn't create God. God created us. We didn't make God. God made us. That's what the new year is about. It's a time not just for partying and getting drunk and mirth and merriment. It's a time to remember who you are and whose you are, that you belong to Almighty God, that God is your creator. As a matter of fact, the Jews didn't call it New Year's. You know what they called it? They called it the world's birthday. That's what New Year's was. It was not just the repeating cycle of years, but it was the celebration of the birthday of the world. When God, the almighty creator, made everything that was made. Yes, it's a religious celebration. It is a spiritual celebration. And I hope you'll take the time, amen, that you will take the time in the midst of all of your mirth and merriment, that you will take the time and remember who God is. He is the creator of the ends of the earth. And then I want you to remember, Lord have mercy, that if you are still here, no matter what you've been through in 2020, just remember that it was God who kept you. It was God who brought you. It was God who protected you. It was God who made a way for you. Yes, yes, so many millions have been stricken with this virus, COVID-19. And yet, you are still here. Many, over 300,000 in America alone have died from COVID-19. And now there is a new virus that, amen, a new virus that we have found in Europe. And just yesterday, it has been revealed that someone in Colorado, in America, has the new virus. Yes, yes, but you are still here, not because because you were more vigilant than others. No, no. Not because, Lord have mercy, amen. Not because hey, you use more sanitizer or a better sanitizer than others and you wore your mask. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because God has kept you here. You're here because he woke you up this morning and he started you on your way. You're here because God is your king keeper. You're here because God is your provider. You're here because God is your protector. Yes, this, if more than any other new year, this new year, celebrate the goodness of God, the greatness of God. 
and celebrate not only that he is the creator of the world, but he is the God of your life. Oh, in the midst of champagne bottles popping and balls falling from Times Square, in the midst of it all, take a time and remember during this time of remembrance. As we look back on 2020, more one of the most difficult years we have ever had in this country. Yes, 3,000 died on 9-11. 58,000 American soldiers killed in Vietnam. 400,000 American soldiers killed in World War II. And yet, saints, this one little virus has almost claimed as many of both of these wars together. Oh, yes, it's been a difficult year in addition to the disease and the death, we've seen, we've seen the onslaught of white supremacy in our land rampaging again. We've seen the attack on black humanity once again. It is as if the covers have been pulled back on the racism that has always been there for 400 years years. And yet, saints, we've been through it all, and we're still standing. You've got to tip your hat to God. You've got to take a moment and give God his propers, give him his respect, give him his just, give him his due. You're here not because you're so good looking. You're here not because you're so smart. You're here not because you're so lucky. You're here because our God has been so good. This is a time to remember God. That's what the Israelites did on Rosh Hashanah. They began by remembering their creator. Oh, begin this new year by putting God first in everything that you do. It was not only a time of remembrance, but secondly, the celebration, yes, the festival of the trumpets, the celebration of Rosh Hashanah. Secondly, it was a time of repentance. You see, Rosh Hashanah comes about 10 days before Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are the two highest days, yes, in the Jewish calendar. They are the two highest days in the Jewish calendar. Uh, they would be like Christmas and Easter to the Christian. And guess what? Jesus, being the good Jew that he was, who never broke the law, he himself would have celebrated, amen, both Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Even more, we know that he is the Yom Kippur. He is our atonement. But in that period of awe, A-W-E, awe, that's what it was called. It began on Rosh Hashanah. The Jews would begin to repent of their sins. Amen. I hope today that it is not only a time of remembrance, remembering your creator and remembering the goodness of God, your creator in your life, but secondly, that it will be a time of repentance. You know what they say? They say that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. You know what, my brothers and sisters, as we stand on the precipice of a new year, I want to let you know that if you keep on doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep on getting what you've been getting. Oh, no, no. 
in the midst of our merriment, in the midst of our joy, in the midst of singing old Lang Syne. Yes, in the midst of the champagne bottles popping, in the midst of it all, I hope you'll get in your corner or your secret closet or some little place where you can not only remember your creator, but you can look back over 2021 and look honestly and truthfully at your life and use this time as a time of repentance. If you go into the new year with the same old you, then you're going to get the same old problems and the same old situations. No, this is a time of repentance because repentance always precedes renewal. Let me say that again. Repentance precedes renewal. There can be no renewal until there is repentance. How many times would Jesus heal someone and then say, Lord, have mercy, go and sin no more. Amen. Their healing simply brought about the opportunity for repentance. Go and sin no more. Do you remember when he began his earthly ministry and he preached his first sermon? His first sermon was short, but it was powerful. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. It was his first sermon. There can be no renewal in the new year 2021 if there is no repentance for the past of 2020. John the Baptist came as the precursor to the Messiah, as a voice crying in the wilderness. But his sermon was the same as the sermon Jesus preached. He preached the same sermon. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Oh, and let me tell you what repentance is. Repentance is turning away from sin. Oh, you can't take the old you with the old mess, with the old baggage, with the old mindset. No, no. You can't take the old you. It was a time for the ancient Israelites. It was a time of repentance. And as we go into 2021, let it be a time of repentance, a time to turn from those things which have held you down and held you back. A time to turn away from those things in your life with which God is not pleased. Oh, brothers and sisters, I see so many people who play with repentance. You see, for them, repentance is simply acknowledging sin and then continuing to live the life of sin. Or repentance from them is some kind of uh, sorrow about sin, sadness about sin, but no serious turning away. Repentance is not merely acknowledging your sin, and repentance is not real, merely feeling bad about what you have done or what you have said or how you have lived, but repentance, as Jesus called us, amen, as the precursor, as the prerequisite to the kingdom of God, true repentance is to turn completely away from the life of sin. And I don't care who you are, how big your Bible or your hymnal is, is how spiritual you are. There are places in your life where you need to make a change. You need to turn around, not just give lip service to repentance, but you need to make a change as you go into 2021. Perhaps habits you need to let go or toxic relationships you need to let go or perhaps there are things in your lifestyle with which the Lord Jesus Christ is not pleased. To this is a time if we go into 2021 with the same old me or the same old you, then we're going to get the same old us in 2021 that we had in 2020. This is a time 
of remembrance to remember the greatness of our creator, God Almighty, and his faithfulness to us throughout 2020. This is a time, it is a time to look in the mirror and to turn away from sin, not just to acknowledge it, amen, not just to be sad about it, but to turn away from sin. But thirdly and finally, as I rush to my close today, I I want to tell you that this year, what the Jews did on Rosh Hashanah, they remembered their creator God. They used it as a time for repentance to make their lives better. But thirdly and finally, it was a time of reconciliation. Ah, yes. During that period of all, the 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. The Jews were challenged to reconcile relationships. How many of you have come out of 2020 and in this year you're going into a new year with broken relationships, bad feelings between brother and brother, sister and sister. Mothers not getting along with their children, children not honoring their parents. Oh, how many of you are going out of 20 into 21 with people that you hate, people that you dislike, people that you have cut off? Yes, for the Israelites, Rosh Hashanah was the celebration of reconciliation. And they were compelled to go and be reconciled to their neighbors. Oh, I ask you today, is there someone with whom you need to be reconciled? Is there someone where there is division between you and a friend, a loved one, perhaps a business associate? Is there someone that you like to hate? Somebody that you hate to like today going into the new year. Don't go into this new year for the new year brings new opportunities, new promises, new visions. Yes, yes, God can do a new thing, but not with the old you, with the new you. Yes, reconciliation. You know what? We are so accustomed. We are so accustomed to living lives of division and hatred, animosity one for another, that we don't even think about the importance of reconciliation. People that you have written off, you know why hatred is so wrong? Hatred is wrong because when you hate someone, they are, as it were, dead to you. Yes, even Jesus taught us that hatred is as death, that the relationship, dead, the friendship, dead. No, this is a time for reconciliation. And what I love about Jesus, he makes it easy because many people say, I'm not going to reconcile to her. She wronged me. But Jesus said, amen, that it doesn't matter if she wronged you or you wronged her. Both of you have the responsibility to be reconciled to one another. And so maybe, maybe the call is for you, though you are the aggrieved party, though you are the hurt party, to go to your brother, to go to your sister. If you are the one who's perpetrated any kind of hurt or harm to another brother or sister, then this is the time of reconciliation. One of my favorite chapters in all of the Bible is the fifth chapter of 2 Corinthians because God says to us in that chapter that we are his ambassadors. We who belong to him, we are his ambassadors. He said, and God has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Oh yes, it's not optional 
God is not pleased when there is aught, when there is hatred, when there is acrimony, uh, animosity between you and your brothers or sisters, you and your family members, you and your friends. No, you belong to Christ. You are an ambassador of Christ. You have the ministry of reconciliation. Even in the church, we have people who don't speak to each other, can't speak to each other. Why? Because we have failed the ministry of reconciliation. You are God's child and God has called you. He says God has entrusted to us the message of reconciliation. What is this message? Oh, brothers and sisters, I'll tell you what this message is. That God in Christ has reconciled us to himself. Our sins, our evil, our hatred, our bigotry, our racism, our deceit, our injustice, our exploitation and oppression, all of these things divided us from God. But in Jesus Christ, God reconciled us to himself, and he has committed to every child of God the message of reconciliation. Our job is to tell the world about Jesus. Our job is to tell the world about the one who reconciles us to God, about the one who died so that our sins could be taken away so that we might be reconciled to God. Yes, don't go into the new year as the old you. Go in as the new you, Lord, and let God do new things in your life. Yes, yes, yes. Go in the new you and let God do new things in your life. Make this new year, this head of the year, this first of the year, make this new year, Lord have mercy, make it count as it has never counted before that God wants to give you new life. He wants to give you a new purpose, new meaning, a new vision. You can do this. How? Yes, well, a time of remembrance. Remember who your creator is and remember what he has done in your life and what he has brought you through in 2020. And it is a time of repentance. Take a long introspective look and turn away from those things in your life which are not pleasing to God. And thirdly and finally, don't go into the new year with the old hatreds and the old animosity and the old vitriol. Go into the new year. Find that one person Perhaps you need to make a phone call or send a text or an email or write a letter, but find that person and reach out to them. For God has given to you the ministry of reconciliation, not just reconciliation among our brothers and sisters, but reconciliation with God. Yes, brothers and sisters, this year, Make it your purpose to tell everyone you know that God in Jesus Christ has reconciled us to himself, that Jesus died on the cross to take away our sins. You have the message of reconciliation, that in Jesus Christ we have been reconciled to God. Someone may be here today. I want you to know that Jesus came to die for your sins. I want you to know that Jesus came so that you could be reconciled to God. Our sins separated us from God. But that man, Jesus Christ, yes, the scriptures say we have one mediator between God and man. It is the man, Jesus Christ. He died to take away your sins. He died 
that you could be forgiven. He died so that you can go into 2021 a new man, a new woman. He changes you from the inside out. He wants to come into your life. He wants to be your Savior and your Lord. And today, he only asks that you believe in him, that you receive him, that you trust him. He came unto his own, and his own received him not, but to as many as did receive him. To them he gave the right to become the children of God. Yes, yes, God wants you to be his child. He wants to be your heavenly father. You want to take a new person into the new year? Then it begins with God. If you're here today and you have never before prayed the prayer of salvation, today I invite you to believe Jesus Christ, to accept him as your personal Savior and Lord. I'm going to pray a simple little prayer. And wherever you are, in your bedroom, in your living room, in your dining room, the bathroom, the den, wherever you are, today, if you want God in your life, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I open the door of my life, Lord Jesus. And I ask you to come into my life, forgive me of my sins, live inside of me, and grant me life eternal in your kingdom, which shall never end. Thank you for what you've done for me today. Thank you for what you're doing in me right now. And thank you for what you shall do through me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, ah, this New Year's morning, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to know that by faith, Jesus Christ is in your life. Please, please call us, 718-297-2301, or email us, info at cbcjny.org. Simply leave us your name and your phone number where you can be reached, and our team will be in touch with you. Amen. To begin your new life in Christ. If you're not a member of a church, then through the miracle of YouTube, through the miracle of the Internet, we invite you to become a part of our church fellowship. Call us. Write us. We look forward to hearing from you. May God bless you. We are two minutes from midnight. Two minutes from midnight. And as is our custom, we like to begin our midnight on our knees. And so tonight, I want to share with you, I want to share with you a prayer for the new year. Let us pray. O oh God, our Father and our Creator, how we bless your holy name. How we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. We acknowledge, Father, that you are King of kings and Lord of lords, God above gods, that there is none beside you, that you and you alone are the God of this universe. And we come tonight, dear Father, looking back at 2020 and thanking you through many dangers, toils, and snares. Oh God, so many fell along the wayside, but you promised us in your word, Lord have mercy that a thousand shall fall at your right hand and 10,000 at your left hand 
but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. We thank you that the death angel has been moving all around us, but by your grace and by your mercy, you've seen fit, Lord have mercy, to bring us into a new year. We say thank you. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your keeping power. Oh God, thank you for bringing us through. And Lord, we know that disease and death are yet around us. But Lord, we are depending on you. And so we lift up 2021. And Father, we put 2021 in your hands. In the name of Jesus, every trial, every difficulty, every challenge, Lord Jesus, every sickness, Lord Jesus, we put 2021 in your hands. All of our dreams, all of our hopes, all of our vision, all of our prayers, we put 2021 in your hands. And Lord, we know what you can do because we've seen what you have done. Oh God, you kept us. You protected us. You made a way for us. God of grace, God of mercy, God of glory, we give 2021 to you. January and February, March and April and May and June, July, August, September, October, November, December. We give 2021 to you. Order our steps in your word. Lord, lead us, guide us. Be a fence all around us. Be a hedge of protection around us. Oh God, tonight we lift up our families to you. Hallelujah. Our loved ones, our wives and husbands, our sons and daughters, our mothers and fathers, our sisters and brothers. We lift up our friends. We lift up the saints of God. We lift up the church of Jesus Christ. Oh God, be a covering over us today. We pray, oh God, that in 2021, you will get the glory in our lives. You will get the honor in our lives. Lord God, I pray that, Lord, you will soon lift this scourge, this pall of death and disease from our land, and that, Lord, we will give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. We pray for health. We pray for prosperity. We pray for progress. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, move among your people. Lord, I pray that someone who does not know you, Lord, will come to see you and come to know you and come to receive you in 2021. Hallelujah. That they will be reconciled unto God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh God, we give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. We give you the majesty. The glory is yours. Lord, have mercy. The power is yours. Lord, have mercy. The praise is yours. The worship is yours. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we give 2021 to you. And Father, we say thank you. Thank you that you brought us through 20. And thank you for what you're going to do in 21. We bless you and we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let the saints say amen. Let the saints say amen. Let the saints say amen. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name. In Jesus Christ we pray. Oh, we bless your name. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Hallelujah. Have mercy on your church, Father. Have mercy on your church, Father. Lord, show us the way. Show us the way. Shine your light. Shine your light. I pray that every eye will see you. Every ear will hear you. Every tongue will confess you. Every knee will bow before you. Lord, shine your light. 
so that we might see you in all of your glory. And Father, we thank you for that day when the trumpet shall blow for the last time and the dead in Christ shall light rise and those who are alive and remain will be caught up in the air to meet you. We give you the praise, we give you the honor, we give you the glory. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He makes me rest in the meadows grass, and he leads me beside the quiet stream. He restores. And he helps me to do what it honors him the most. That's why I'm saved. That's why I'm saved. That's why I'm saved. Sister Kim Summerson for that wonderful, wonderful solo. And what I love about Sister Kim is 
Uh, amen. She is as sweet in spirit as her voice is beautiful in song. Thank you so much, Sister Kim. I want to thank Brother Al. He's uh, without his posse today, but he knows how to carry on and get the job done. Thank you, Brother Al. And we want to thank uh, our media team uh, for helping us today. God bless you and keep you. My prayer for every one of you in this new year. I pray for your health, your healing, your well-being. I pray the peace of God in your life. Amen. I pray that every need will be supplied. I pray that your days will be happy, full of laughter and joy. And most of all, I pray that the Spirit of Jesus Christ will dwell in your heart richly each and every day. I pray that your family will be safe, that the blood of Christ will cover you, amen, even as the blood on the doorpost covered the Hebrew children in Egypt when the death angel flew over. I pray that the blood of Christ will cover your home, your family, your children, your parents. I pray that 2021 will bring you things you didn't expect, that God will do things in your life you didn't even know were possible. Most of all, I pray that you will remember your Creator and you remember who you are and whose you are. May God bless you this new year. Happy New Year one and all. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name. The good Lord willing, we will return Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Uh, we want you to know that we are open for public worship. And if you feel comfortable enough coming to join us, we invite you to come and worship with us live. Everything has been cleaned, sanitized, and disinfected. And, uh, and so we welcome you. We take your temperature at the door. We wear our masks. We practice six feet of separation. We have hand sanitizer all around. So you are welcome to come here and feel safe in this atmosphere and this environment. Uh, if you're not ready yet to return to church, we understand. Please, please know that, Lord willing, uh, we'll be back. YouTube live stream, 11 o'clock Sunday morning. May God bless you and may God keep you is our prayer.